Well, one of my subscribers asked me to do a reaction video to a Veritasium video on why we can't measure the speed of light, or more specifically, the one-way speed of light. And first, I'd like to say I normally like Veritasium's video, and in this case, I really like this one because he's pointing out the problems in the Einstein theory of special relativity, and he almost says that Einstein was wrong, but he's not willing to go that far. But I am. So, with, with that, I'll just briefly say, if you're not familiar with the problem, you might want to watch his video first. But in summary, in order to measure the speed of light, you need to have two clocks at two points that are synchronized. But we can't synchronize two clocks at two points. So we can't measure the one-way speed of light. So Einstein just assumed that the speed of light is the same in both directions. And he assumed incorrectly, as Derek says in this clip. Now, you might think it is just simpler that light should travel at the same speed in all directions. But the truth is, that is a convention rather than an experimentally verified fact. Einstein himself pointed this out in his famous 1905 paper on the electrodynamics of moving bodies. He spends the first couple of pages on the problem of synchronizing clocks at different locations A and B. And he says, there is no way that we can meaningfully compare the times they measure unless we establish by definition that the time required by light to travel from A to B equals the time it requires to travel from B to A. He's essentially defining that the speed of light in opposite directions is the same. And he puts by definition in italics to remind us that this is only a convention. It's known as the Einstein synchronization convention. So the idea that the speed of light is the same in opposite directions, as Einstein would later write, is neither a supposition nor a hypothesis about the physical nature of light, but a stipulation that I can make of my own free will to arrive at a definition of simultaneity. That sounds a lot more subjective than how I think most people would imagine the speed of light is defined. Now, as he says, Einstein's assumption of the speed of light being the same in both directions is just an assumption, a simplification, in fact. And it happens to be wrong. And the reason it's wrong is because Einstein was a quantum field denier. He said there wasn't an ether, there wasn't a field, there wasn't a medium of transmission for light. But now we know there's a quantum field. We know it behaves like it's made of dipoles. And we know the photons produce rotating electric and magnetic waves which would interact with those dipoles. So photons are constantly interacting with the dipole field around it. And because of that, it means that photons travel in the rest ray. And that's one of the critical points. You can think of it like if you're on a boat going upstream and the river's going downstream and you jump off the boat and you start swimming. Well, when you jump off your boat, like light leaving its source, it loses all of its momentum, like it's Doppler shifted. Once you're in the water, your ability to swim is measured versus the rest frame of the river, which is moving downstream. And light's the same way. Once a photon leaves the source, it's propagating its electric and magnetic field in the rest frame as it moves. And its light, its speed, is always the speed of light C under special relativity, where there's no mass locally. And so that gives you a constant speed of light in all directions because the permittivity and permeability are constant in all directions. And with that information, I'll play the second clip. So someone has measured the speed of light. Or have they? What has been measured is the round trip or two-way speed of light. But no one has measured the one-way speed of light. One thing I'm going to throw at you, 
and I'm, I'm just gonna just gonna come out and tell you. It's like, okay. what if the speed of light in this direction is different from the speed of light in this direction? Then that sounds like a Veritasium video. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The question is, could you figure it out? The kind of crux of this problem is that the only way people have managed to measure the speed of light is for a round trip. No one's ever managed to measure the speed of light in just one direction. It's possible that the speed of light is half of C in one direction and then instantaneous on the return journey. What? That's, that's possible. <laughs> Are you serious? Think about communicating with an astronaut stranded on Mars. Let's call him Mark. We send out a signal and get a response 20 minutes later. So we imagine our signal takes 10 minutes to get there, and the reply takes 10 minutes to come back. But it's possible that our message took all 20 minutes to get there, and the reply came back instantaneously. There's no way we could tell the difference between these two scenarios. But why would the speed of light be different? Well, it's possible that there is some preferred direction through space-time. I mean, our universe has a lot of symmetries, but there is also some asymmetry. For example, why is there so much matter relative to antimatter? And physicists have worked out internally consistent theories of physics in which the speed of light is different forwards and in reverse. The speed of light could vary by just a few percent, up to, at the extreme, going C over 2 in one direction and infinitely fast in the other direction. So, the reality is we're stuck. We need synchronized clocks to measure the one-way speed of light, but we need to know the one-way speed of light in order to synchronize our clocks. The space-time diagram shows how there is flexibility in what you consider to be the same moment at two different locations, and in how you define the one-way speed of light. Einstein chose the convention where the one-way speed of light is always the same, but from an experimental perspective, any other convention is just as valid, up to and including one where the speed of light is C over 2 one way and instantaneous the other way. So in this clip, Derek's made another mistake in terms of the range. When we measure the speed of light, or if we estimate the one-way speed of light, we need to know the speed relative to the rest range. In our case, our galaxy is moving about 600 kilometers a second relative to the cosmic background radiation, which is the same rest frame as the rest frame of the quantum field. It's an impossibility that the universe has two different rest frames. So the cosmic microwave background rest frame measurement is a measurement of the quantum field rest frame. So a velocity of a source has nothing to do with the velocity of the light. But an observer from the source is going to see light moving through the rest frame. And since it's 600 kilometers a second, you end up either adding or subtracting that if you're going exactly in that direction. So you can be 600 kilometers slower in one direction and 600 kilometers per second faster in the other direction, giving you a 1200 kilometer per second difference. Now in order to calculate more precisely, we really need to know the angle of direction and it gets very complicated. In theory, you can synchronize clocks to one decimal place accuracy because that's all we know in terms of accuracy of the measurement of our velocity relative to the microwave background. I've done a couple quick drawings and in one case if you take two flashlights pointing at each other you have two beams going the speed of light at the speed of light in the rest frame. So their combined speed is two times the speed of light. And then you have another one if a rocket is moving 0.999 times the speed of light relative to the rest frame and emits a photon, the photon front wave is only propagating slowly in front of the rocket. And that's why I say that the speed of light can vary from zero for an observer in the rest frame to 2C, because when it hits a mirror, 
you have a rocket going 0.999 and a photon going the speed of light, and you get 1.999. Now, you still can have, as he says, instantaneous return, because if you have two rockets going at each other, one has a photon beam and one has a mirror, and they're both going almost the speed of light. By the time the speed of light bounces, the light bounces off the mirror and hits the other rocket, the rockets are going to hit each other, so it's going to be pretty instantaneous. But that's not really what's going on. The speed of light is still limited to 2c, because that's all you can do when the speed of light is the speed of light in the rest frame. So that's why I say the range is 0 to 2c and not c over 2 to infinity. The speed of light can never be infinite. And with that, I'll play the third clip. One of the things is you only know about that light when it reaches you. And you don't know anything about what journey it took to get to you. You just see it and it's there. So like it's instantaneous. So an instantaneous interpretation of that light is just as good as one where it takes C to reach us. This is breaking my brain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's kind of unknowable, isn't it? It is unknowable. That's the whole point of the video. Is to say, we've all agreed, and this is based on something Einstein wrote in 1905, we've all agreed to just say, it's C in every direction. But the truth is, the physics works the same, whether it's C or the C over 2 and instantaneous, or anything in between. As long as the round trip works out to be C, none of physics breaks. And that's the crazy thing. So if we can never measure the one-way speed of light, and if it makes no difference to any of the laws of physics, then what's the point in even talking about it? Well, that is certainly one valid perspective in a debate that has been ongoing since 1905. You know, some physicists appeal to Occam's razor. Isn't it just simpler if light travels at the same speed in all directions? Most working physicists just accept the convention and move on with their lives. But I think it's important to point out that it is just a convention, not an empirically verified fact. Personally, I find it fascinating that this is something about the universe that is hidden from us. Sure, the round trip speed of light is C, but does the one-way speed even have a well-defined value? And if it doesn't, what does that mean for the concept of simultaneity? When is right now on Mars? Does it even make sense to talk about things happening at the same time if they're separated by distance? You know, maybe this is an odd quirk of the universe and there's no good reason for it. Or maybe when physics takes the next paradigmatic leap, our inability to measure the one-way speed of light will be the obvious clue to the way general relativity, quantum mechanics, space and time are all connected. And we'll wonder why we didn't see it before. So as my notes in the clip say, the quantum field theory solves a problem. If you actually have a quantum field and you're measuring velocity relative to the quantum field and the speed of light c is constant in the quantum field, then you can synchronize clocks somewhat accurately, but not accurately enough to measure the actual speed of light to eight decimal places. But we can do a much better job than what Einstein did, although the math is more complicated. Now, we do have an issue with, say, general relativity in that mass changes the speed of light in quantum general relativity because it changes the permittivity and permeability. So in the, even in the rest frame, it's constantly changing the speed depending on what mass is around, which makes it a much more complicated problem in real-world scenarios. But under special relativity, we have to keep in mind that there's no space contraction in the rest frame. There's no time dilation in the rest frame under special relativity conditions because the movement of a body through, through the quantum field rest frame does not change wavelengths and frequencies of, in the rest frame itself. And it doesn't change the speed of light in the rest frame itself. So all of the things about length contraction, time dilation of space, or, or the quantum field instead of space, it doesn't happen when you're talking about light transmission in the rest frame of the quantum field. 
So the whole way that Einstein handled special relativity created a whole lot of unnecessary problems. The problem's much more simple. Now, when you have an object moving through the rest frame, that object experiences a change in clock rate. So you do have to consider that. Your observer that's moving, the rocket going 0.999, the speed of light, has slower clocks. So they see a different scenario than the observer at rest in the rest frame. And that's what you get with special relativity. You have, have to consider the observer's point of view out all the time. Anyway, well, like I said, I enjoyed Veritasium's video. I'm glad he's willing to say, well, Einstein might have made a mistake, but he should have said, Einstein made a mistake here, and we need to fix it. And I hope people watch my video and, and decide that, yeah, they want to fix it. And so I hope you like, share it with your physicist friends, subscribe for more. And I describe this a little bit in my book, The Zero Point Universe, but I don't get too heavily into special and general relativity there, just, just an overview. And so if you buy one of my books, that'll help me in my retirement and you'll learn a lot more. So thanks for watching.